Good morning, Central Fam online. We're so glad that you could join us today. If you are new to CBC, you guys can come on. You guys can just walk on by me. Um, we, uh, we're gonna have a great service, but also I want to connect with you. So connect right now. You can text new to CBC to 94,000. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, but yes, you can do that. And then also um, we would, hey buddy, thanks. Um, something else I was going to say. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, but, um, but yes, so glad that you could join us today. And we're about to play a game. So online, play that game and you won't regret it. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad you guys are here with us. Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies in the house. We're going to get started with the infamous Noah McCormick as he uh, has a, something special planned for all the ladies. So if you're outside, y'all come on in. It's going to be good. All right, there's your Bob Barker <laughs> um, microphone, yeah. so we can be Talking real about. game show hosts. Okay, so all the ladies in here get to play a game. Sorry, dudes, you are not going to be able to play in a few weeks. It will be Father's Day, and we'll probably forget to do this, so it'll be good. Um, but I want to play a game with all the ladies, and the prize for winning is a Massage Envy gift card. Good yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One massage and the gratuity is already even factored in. in. They're not plugged in. Okay. So, all right. yeah. um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so good it is know. actually, you're winning something cool. Anyway, so let's start with the first question. I've never even seen these. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay so you're, this is the rules to this. You have to just be honest and answer these things inside of your heart online. You can answer these online as well, but... Um, answer and then just keep track of your score. Got it? So got it. Perfect. All right. Okay. So uh, first question is this. What cake containing almonds is traditionally made on Mothering Sunday? Is it A, the Battenberg? Is it B, the Seminole cake? Is it C, the delicious chocolate fudge cake? Or is it D, Victoria wait, wait, wait. sponge cake? What's Mothering Sunday? I have <laughs> Sounds okay, like, I Hello. Know. Welcome to Mothering Sunday. That doesn't sound right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I All don't know any of those cakes except for C, but... All right, what's the answer? B. B. Anybody get how that? Many, how many of you actually knew that? Seriously? Okay, right in the back over here. Mm. Bunch Very of bakers. Good. Okay, next question. Which of the following flowers are most often associated mm. with Mother's Day? Is Mother's it daisies, Day. lilies, or carnations? I know the answer to this one, guys. All right, it's let's see. Good. Let's think. Okay, ladies, it was C. Let's see, any you know men get carnations for their ladies today? Anybody? <laughs> like, oh. Well, <laughs> that's awkward. All okay. right. Uh, next question. Why don't you read it off, Clayton? Uh, what is the most popular gift purchased for Mother's Day? The most Ooh. popular gift. Is it balloons? Or is it flowers? Or is it cards? All what right. is the answer? What do you think it is? Okay. The but answer is C. C. It's cards. It's cards. cards. Yeah. It's because those last forever. And yes. flowers don't. Flowers don't and balloons get popped. All yep, right. That's right. Next question. What does the word mother mean in Latin? Now, Clayton. What? You're a smart dude. No. <laughs> I, I took Latin in high school. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but because I didn't want to do Spanish. But anyways... So I don't even know the answer to this. Um, mutter, I think madre, or mutter just doesn't sound mater? right. <laughs> mater, mater is this Cars Three? Is that Mater? <laughs> Matter? I don't know the answer to this. All one. right. So, what is the answer? C. It is Mater. Okay. All right, now I'm done for Mater, man. Mater. <laughs> All right. Okay. So next question. Mama Mia is a hit by which pop group? Is it Boney M? Never even heard of that ever. Um, is M. it ABBA or is it The Doors? Now, ABBA is a religious term, like okay. ABBA Father. Okay. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, I don't know. Mama Mia, who sang it? Get your answer. It was B. Mama Mia. Here we go again. Anyway, um, all right. Okay. And then the last question. What was Ruth's husband's name? Was it Boaz? 
Was it broke as? <laughs> was it lazy as? Or was it lion as? <laughs> I, I should probably uh, look over these before they're on the screen. Note to self for next year. I should have had you read them. I know. Oh, missed opportunity. Uh, all right. <laughs> we all know it was Boaz. Okay. A. That's awesome. <laughs> That's okay. fun. Anyway, um, so this is my last Sunday here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not. You hired me. You knew what you were getting. All right. Um, this is a bonus question. If, you, um, if you've gotten a lot right, and I'm not even going to question it, you're still in the running. If you've gotten no questions right, you're still in the running. So, <laughs> okay. so they um, didn't even it's just, anything. yeah, it's like, whose lines did anyway? Like, the points don't matter. Anyway. Okay, okay bonus question. Points. Real quick. Whoever wins gets this. And I'm, I may miss you. So, like, there's a lot of people. Anyway, mothers. I will give this gift card to the first mother who can show me a picture of your kids. Boom, right in the back. Seriously? Right, right in the back. It's like she had it Holy as a moly. screensaver on her phone. Everybody give her She's a round of applause. Her kid. That was pretty quick. Oh my gosh. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey guys, thank you again for being here this morning um, for Mother's Day. We're, we're excited about everything that God is going to do um, here in this service. So let's go to the Lord real quick. And let's pray as we begin to worship. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Why am I using this mic? I don't even know. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, joy and laughter. And thank you for our moms. Thank you for the women in our lives. I pray that you would bless them today. And God, help us uh, to lay aside things, burdens we have, things that we're carrying today to be able to, to worship you. And we pray, God, that you would speak um, to us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
that promise this morning. Amen. Hey, it's so great to have you here at church today. You guys can go ahead and have a seat this morning because we've got something really special in store. Good morning, Central. My name is Mindy Russell, and I am Central's Kid Director. Uh, if you will help me by welcoming a couple of families to the stage, we're going to have a baby dedication today. <laughs> Job security, you guys. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and while our families are making their way to the stage, I, uh, I learned that not everybody is familiar with what baby dedication is, why it's important. I want to tell you, as a church body, just a little bit about it, why we do it. Um, baby dedication involves three sets of people. So the cutest people that it involves are these little teeny tinies here. Um, this kid is here because the parents view these kiddos as a gift on loan from God. And these parents desire to see their kid grow up in a faith community where they will be influenced by scriptural teachings and godly influences in the hopes that someday that each of these littles of their own free will will choose to follow Christ and serve him with their life. So we do this because there's a biblical example that's set for us. In the Old Testament, Samuel's parents, in the New Testament, Jesus' parents took them to the temple and essentially said this. They said, God, we recognize this kid is a gift from you. We cannot do this on our own. And we are relying on you and on the faith community where you've planted us to help us. So today, not only are we dedicating these kiddos, but we're dedicating these parents. And guys, we know <laughs> your kids are not gonna remember today, <laughs> but, um, but you are. You're gonna remember the promise that you're making today. And we talked last week about have parenting with the end in mind. And we know that with our kids, there is so much that is more caught than taught. Um, and you're here because you're willing to live out a God-honoring life and an example in your home. And uh, that is based on Deuteronomy 4. Let me review my notes here. Um, in Deuteronomy 4, it sets out an example for how we should parent. In Deuteronomy, uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And if you're in my family, it's always 10 o'clock at night and someone has a question about the Trinity. So that's when those will come. Be ready for that. Um, <laughs> tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So that essentially is just saying that as you live your life, as things come and things happen, 
point out God in all of those situations. So parents, I'm going to ask you to make a promise here today. With the help of God and with the help of your church family, will you do all that you can to provide your child physically, mentally, and spiritually with all they need in order to grow up and be a successful follower of Christ? If so, please say, I will. Yay! Okay, (laughs) good. Step one. The third set of people we're dedicating here today is you, the church family. We are dedicating ourselves as a safe village for these kids to grow up in. Because as these littles grow up, they are going to be forming their views about scripture, um, about spirituality, about who God is based on what they see in your lives. So um, if you are a family member, a close friend, or a small group member of these families, would you please stand in support of them? Even those who aren't standing, I want to ask if you will respond with I will in uh, response to these statements. Central family, will you do all that you can to live a godly life as an example for these little ones? Will you help, pray for, encourage, and support these parents as they raise their children in God's ways? Will you volunteer in kids' ministry starting today? I thought I'd get at least a couple of you that way. (laughs) Those standing, please be seated and uh, join me in prayer as I pray over these parents. And then we're going to get to the really cute part. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Garzas, for the Thompsons, and for the Paines. I thank you for their desire to raise these little people in your ways and to devote them to you. God, I pray that as a church family that we will come alongside them, support them, dry their tears, help them when they are tired, bring them coffee when they don't think they can make it through the next five minutes, and love, love, love these kids as you love us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you guys like to meet these families? (laughs) Okay, our first family today is the Thompson family. Thompson family, come on over here. Center stage. Clayton, come on over. Can Clayton hold Stella? Can you hold her for real? You mean, I I like bald people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we have Blake and Callista here, and they are dedicating these two cutie patooties today. This is Parker Ray. Parker, can you say hi? Okay, it's fine. It's cool. And then this is Stella Grace. So a little bit about Parker. He is a fan of coloring. He likes wearing his rain boots, but it doesn't look like his mom let him wear them today. And he likes to hold his nose and say it stinks. And, you know, with two babies in the house. That's kind of an obvious. And then this little nugget here, Stella Grace, loves being held, she loves being outside, and she loves getting hugs and kisses from her big brother, which, I mean, he's adorable, obviously. So uh, this week, in preparation for baby dedication, I spent some time looking up what these kiddos' names mean, and I just want to pray over them in light of the meanings of their names. So Parker, your name, Parker, means cultivated land. That's a, big, that's a big phrase, isn't it? Essentially, that is God making order out of chaos. And Ray means my Lord and my song. They named you really well. And then little Miss Stella. Stella means star and grace means graceful blessing. Join me as I pray over these two. Father, for Parker Ray, I pray that he will be a man who cultivates things in your name, who makes order out of chaos and who builds things. And Lord, may you always and forever be his song. And for sweet little Stella, just like a star, I pray that her life will point people heavenward. And may she be a graceful blessing to many, many people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's give the Thompson family a hand. Payne family, come join us. Do you think Brady will let Clayton hold him? He might. Maybe. All right. Five dollars if you spit Ooh, up. Oh no. Well, hello, pumpkin. I'll preach like it. Hi. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, he's cute. Yeah. I want to pinch him? Okay. Brady Mac. Brady Mac. Brady means open meadow. So if you can imagine a place that is colorful and full of wildflowers and life, but it's also really peaceful. And Mac means charming, and I think you would agree. He's pretty charming, right? (laughs) Let's pray for Mr. Brady Mac Payne. 
Heavenly Father, for Brady Mac, I pray that you will li- let him live a life that is full of color and vibrant, and that in his presence, others will feel your peace, see your beauty, and have lots and lots of joyful laughter due to his charming countenance. We thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I guess you guys can have him back. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know if this one's going to let you hold her, but come on over here, Garza family. I'll hold Ben. I'll just hold him. Perfect, perfect, beautiful. (laughs) This is Miss Autumn Olivia Garza. And Autumn is another dancing fan, and she also has a huge heart for those that are lucky enough to have her love them. (gasps) Yeah, that's you. She recognizes a pretty baby when she sees one. So her name, Autumn Olivia, Autumn is, the we know, fall, the most cozy and precious of all the seasons. And then Olivia means peace and kindness. So can we pray for Miss Autumn Olivia? All right. Heavenly Father, for sweet Autumn, in every season of life, may she be a reminder that you are our peace and that your kindness will always draw us closer to you. May she be a reminder that as seasons change, you do not. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's please give a warm round of applause to the Garza family, the Thompson family, and the Payne family. Hey, that didn't uh, just give you a little bit of joy in your heart this morning. I don't know what will. Let's stand together and let's just give our God thanks and praise this morning. We serve an awesome, awesome God.
From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God God in your lives this morning. And I just wanted to sing that song today really as a testimony that we can say that as I look back on my life, that my God has been faithful to me. And you know, Mother's Day can be pretty hard. I know of many people who, who won't even come to a church service on Mother's Day because of the pain that they feel. And my family once felt that pain, you know, we couldn't have children for the longest time, had surgeries, had all these things. And finally, you kind of just you say, you know what, God, your will be done. And now I stand here and I look at my three children. 
God's goodness in my life. You know, but maybe that's not your story's ending. Some of you, maybe this is your first Mother's Day without your mom. And it's hard, you know? But what can we do in times like this? We say, you know what? If we walk through the fire, our God be praised, whether he saves us from it or not. Because as we sang, he is worthy of our worship. We have his grace, we have his mercy, and we have his goodness. So let's sing that chorus one more time. No matter what we're walking through this morning, we thank God that we serve a good God and that he is in control of all things. Amen? Come on, let's sing. It's all my life you have been Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful that you love us, that, Father, we are called sons and daughters of the Most High God, and that we don't have to be a slave to the things of this world any longer. Once you have control of our lives, Father, we are not a slave to fear, a slave to anxiety, but, Father, we live in the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit saying we just wanna give you our lives, God. And we know that in this world we will have troubles, but we can take heart because you have overcome the world. So Father, have your way in our church this morning. Have your way in our hearts. And I pray this all in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen. You can be seated this morning. Man, what a great time of worship that was. I hope you were able to join in with us and worship wherever you are this morning. Speaking of that, we'd love to know where you are watching from. So right now in the chat, let us know where you're watching. You know, whether you just stumbled across this live stream or maybe you watch every single week, I believe it's not by accident. God has something for all of us today. I'm so glad that you're here today. We're about to jump into our message in just a moment. So this would be a great time to go and grab a Bible or a notebook, or you can even download our sermon notes on the app, the Church Center app, and you can follow along. It's super convenient. It's got fill in the blanks and scripture right there for you to save and look back on later. If you don't have the app, there's a link in the description of this live stream that will take you straight to the notes. Well, today's message is going to be a good one and I'm so glad that you're here for it. Are you new to Central? My name is Deborah Stevens and I'm the Connection Director. Thank you for watching us online. I'd love to answer any questions you may have or even help you plan an in-person visit to Central. You can reach me at the email address that's on the screen or you can text NEW to CBC to 94000. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, if I didn't introduce myself earlier, I'm Clayton, the pastor here at Central, and I'm so glad to see all you guys uh, this morning. If you'd like to follow along with the message today, just scan the QR code up on the screens right here, and it'll take you to the notes there, and you can, you can have everything um, for you today. Well, man, it's, it's going to be a good day, um, I believe. I got to call my mom already in between services this morning. I called her, and she answered, and she was like, new number, who dis?" Right? No, I'm just kidding. She, she, was, she, she, actually, um, she actually answered the phone call, and uh, we got to talk, and, and it was great. I, I love my mom, and um, even though she doesn't live uh, nearby, uh, we get to talk often, and 
Um, and I hope that uh, if you've got a mom in your life, um, you've got a grandmother in your life, man, if you've got a wife in your life, you know, honor them today um, as we, we continue our, our series uh, in a series called InstaFam. And so we're looking at what it means to be a faithful family. We started it right after Easter, and we're on week three. In the first couple of weeks, we talked about men and how men are in their garden, and they're called to cultivate their garden, which is their, their family, their, their community, their career, their church, to take care of the things that God has called us to take care of. And last week, we talked about families in the car. If you remember that, we looked at the stick figure family and how it looks perfect, the stick figure family on the back, the decal on the back of a car, but inside the car, it's not always perfect, is it? And we talked about how the answer to most of our family's problems is for every single person in that family to die to themselves, meaning that they, they strip off their selfishness and pride, that they, instead of thinking about themselves, they think about other people first, especially the people in their family. And if everybody's doing that, then families begin to take care of one another the way that God intended us to be. Well, today, obviously, we're talking about moms, aren't we? We're going to be talking about, about mothers or women in our lives. Now, I've got a great woman in my life, uh, my wife, Holly, who's sitting there in the back over there. And um, I love her so much, and she is a great mom. And we have, we have two kids, and on, most mornings and most most evenings, we get to come together as a family and have a, have a meal. And with just the four of us, we don't have to have the giant dining room table. We just have like a small round table. But when we sit down to eat, my son always has his spot. And then he's next to me. And my daughter always sits across from me. And my wife always sits next to me. I don't know what it is, but everybody has their spot, don't they? And if you, man, try this someday. Just sit in someone else's spot, okay, and see what happens with your family. Isn't that weird? Like, we always, we love our, our spot. But what's great about my wife is that she has a seat at the table. In my family, she has a special place. And for every woman in this room, you have a seat at the table. Your responsibilities are big, and I don't want your responsibilities. Your job is tough. You have, have, a, have men in your life who are, who are sitting next to you with all their faults and all their problems. You have, you have kids who are sitting across from you with all of their issues and you trying to take care of them. You have responsibilities on the table right in front of you. and You have a world all around you, a culture and society that's saying you need to be a certain way and live a certain way. Well, know this. <clears throat> Women, you are not alone. There are great women to your right and to your left. And there are women who have come before you, who have lived a godly life and served as a model for you. But I get it. The, mo the mother life, the woman life can be really tough. And I think the reason it's tough is because of the comparison game, right? Every single person in this room, especially women today, if you're here with us or if you're online with us, it is it's hard to not compare yourself with someone else. And usually it's not in a positive way. You don't usually compare yourself to someone and say, man, I'm way better than that person. Usually it's the other way around where you compare yourself to someone and you say, I don't measure up. For example, like here on the screen, there's, there's a couple ladies. Like you got the, got the pioneer woman right there and you've got Joanna Gaines. And you look at them, you're like, man, they've got it all together. They've got perfect families they know how to provide. They know how to, to have, a, have a business. They are always put together, and they're successful. And you, you think, and you look at them and go, I will never measure up to that person. Well, on Mother's Day, here's what usually happens in most churches. Up on stage, we wheel out a 3,000-year-old lady on, in a wheelchair, okay, because she's 3,000 years old. And so we wheel her out, okay, and we put her in front of you, and we say, women, you need to be like this woman, okay? You need to be like her because she is perfect. She is the ideal woman. And her shadow is, is a long, deep shadow that, that casts over all of your accomplishments, all the things that you've done well. And you realize, I will never measure up to this person. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, aren't we? You know? Well, guess what? 
We're going to talk about her today, okay? So I've wheeled her out, but, but get, get this. Let me give you a little background to this, to this woman. In the Old Testament, we have this woman in the book of Proverbs, and back then they kind of called her the alphabet woman, okay? They called her the alphabet woman because in this Proverbs, it's like this, this, this Proverbs is actually like a poem at the very end, and it's this acrostic where every single line started out with the next letter in the Hebrew language. So in English, it might be like an amazing wife and a, a beautiful woman and a, a caring woman or a, 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 a dashing mom. Or whatever, right? Like just the, these, like just descri- descriptive words, and that's how this 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 poem goes. And it begins to describe this woman who is absolutely perfect, and the things that she does is amazing. She is the the A to Z kind of woman. She can do it all. She can do it all. And the reality is that woman doesn't exist, right? <laughs> that woman, it, there, there, it's something that it can never be obtained. And so we got to get that. Right off the bat and realize that for all the ladies in this room, this Proverbs 31 woman is someone that you don't have to try to measure up to. The goal here is not to be perfect. The goal is for you to continually walk and move towards that ideal woman that Scripture has. And my prayer for you today is this, that it would not be a weight on you when you try to compare yourself to this this woman It'd not be a weight, but instead you would look at her as like a coach, a coach that motivates and encourages you. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter 31. And we'll have, if you don't have your Bible, we'll have it up on the screen um, for us today. But we're going to look at and just walk through a couple of encouraging key statements in this chapter that I believe will help all women here in this room. So look at Proverbs chapter 31. We'll start in verse 10. Here's what the Bible says. Who can find that perfect woman, right? Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies, and her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. I don't know if you guys have been watching the, the news lately, but you know Johnny Depp has been in the news a whole bunch, you know, with this trial thing that's going on. It's kind of crazy. He's a weird dude, but whatever. And so he, you guys know him from Pirates of the Caribbean and movies, and uh, he, he is he's, uh, Jack Sparrow. And Jack Sparrow, his, his whole point in life, his pursuit of life is to chase after treasure, isn't it? To chase after treasure. And I think for every man in this room, here's what this is kind of saying. Every man in this room, we chase after treasures in our lives. It might be financial security. It might be stability. It might be success. It might even be like hobbies that we have or championships. You know what I'm talking about, guys? We chase after things in this life that we think will fulfill us. But what this is saying is that a good woman is more valuable Than all of those things. And the reason is, is because she can be trusted. She can be trusted. Trusted more than all the treasures that the world has to offer. In other words, you could say this a good woman delivers on her promises. That's what a good woman does. She delivers on her promises. And so she becomes this precious treasure. This precious treasure in her man's life. And I think that the reason is, is because she has confidence in him. The reason that this, this woman can be, um, is considered a treasure is because, hey, I, I can trust her. I can trust her with, with my, my most intimate things in my life. And that's difficult, isn't it, guys? Guys, we have a hard time trusting other people. Honestly, who do we trust the most? Ourselves. You know, and so we go through this life trusting ourselves, and all of a sudden, this woman enters our life, and it changes everything. Everything radically changes, and she begins to fulfill us in ways we never thought that another person could fulfill us. And she gives us security, and she gives us love. She gives us true friendship and companionship and intimacy. And she becomes this different kind of treasure in our lives. And I think the reason 
that she's different is because we really know where she has come from. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19. You don't have to turn there. I'll just show you up on the screen. Here's what the Bible says. It says, fathers, they can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth. That's what can happen. A dad can give a son all the treasure in the world. But look what it says. But only the Lord can give an understanding wife. Guys know where a good woman comes from, and it's from the Lord. And so I just want to say to all the ladies in this room, you are a blessing to us. We are, we're rooting for you, and we want, we want the absolute best for you. So not only is a, is a good woman a blessing because, because she um, delivers on her promises, but here's a second aspect of this, this passage that teaches us about a good woman. It's this, that a good woman is an influencer. An influencer. I don't know if you ever see anybody walk into a place or like even to our church and a woman walks in and she's got that, that influencer hat on. You know what I'm talking about? You got the cool looking hat. Like we got one right down here, okay? So caitlin has got one on right now. And so when that person walks into the room, you're like, man, it's just like, that person seems like she's got it together. You know, she's confident enough just to walk in any place. She's got that cool hat on. And you look at that person, you say, man, they, they've got it together. They're successful and they're making an, an impact in this world. Well, 3,000 years ago, they didn't have influencer hats, okay? If they did, they probably would have said that on here. But look what they actually had. Look, there's something different that they talked about and kind of described what it meant to be a woman of influence. Look what it says here. It says this. She's like a merchant ship. <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and, and plans the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong. She is a hard worker. So what this is talking about in 3,000 years ago culture is that she is a provider, right? She's a provider, and she's, she's focused on being the best version of herself, not just for herself, but for her family and even people outside of her family. Look what it says. It says that she inspects a field, okay, and buys it. And then she goes and takes that money with her earnings and she, she goes and plants a vineyard. What it's talking about is that, that she's savvy, right? That she's a woman who, who knows how to run a business successfully. That she has skills, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I mean, she's just a great woman who can actually go out in this world and have influence. Not someone that just sits at home, okay, and makes dinner. But someone who actually goes out and lives the way and being an influence, influence in her world the way that God created her to be. And if you look back at this verse, there's a couple, a couple of ways that she is an influence. First, she's an influence to her family, isn't she? The Bible says she gets up before dawn, prepare breakfast for her household, and plan the day's work for her servant girls. For the people in her home, she is providing for them. She's an influence in their life. I mean, kids, think about it. Kids in this room, you grown-up kids, think about your mom. And all the influence that she has had on your life, if you've had a mother in your life or a mother figure in your life. I think about my mom. Man, the older I get, the more I look back and go, man, I was terrible. <laughs> like, like the things that I did or the, the heartache I put my mom through or the things that I selfishly desired and wanted and she sacrificed to provide for me. I don't know why she did it, okay? But she did it and I thank her every single day for that because she was an influence in my life. She provided for me. But you know what, there's a couple of verses later in verse 20, there's another uh, type of influence that, that um, a woman is. It says this, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. What it's saying here is that, that not only is, is a good woman an influence in her home, but she's an influence outside of her home to other people in her community. And then it goes on and says this, she has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. Here's what I think this means. Not that she can make good clothes, okay? It's not what it means. If you're a family struggling in the middle of winter 3,000 years ago, what are you thinking about? Just yourself, right? You're just trying to make it. What he's talking about is a woman who has a family who, who isn't cold in winter because they, they have great clothes, because the mom has provided for them. And here's what's cool about that. If a family isn't worried about themselves, what, what are they released to do? 
They're released to go and be an influence in their community to other people, to help other people out. And that's what's so cool about a good woman of God is that she is someone who is not as influential in her home, but she gets to be an influence outside of her home and she gets to multiply her home and multiply her influence in the world. That's what it means to be an influence, to make an impact in the world around you. So a good woman, she can be trusted. And a good woman is an influence. And she's influential in her home, out outside of her home. But how does she do that? I think that the reason she's able to do that is this, this third kind of point for today. We find it in Proverbs 31, and it's this, that a good woman is, she's fearless. A good woman is fearless. Look what the Bible has to say here. In verse 25 through 27, it says this, She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future, which is kind of cool, okay? When she speaks, her words are wise, and she, she gives instructions with kindness, and she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Here's what this is saying, I believe, that she isn't afraid. She isn't afraid, and she laughs at the future because, because she's prepared. And she works hard, and all of a sudden, when, when things go bad, she's prepared. Her family is prepared and, and taken care of. And all of her hard work begins to, to pay off. And so when she wakes up in the morning, she doesn't worry about, about the future because her family's taken care of. There's some money in the bank. Her kids are on the right path because of all of her hard work. Day after day, her consistent hard work. That, my friends, is a good woman is a godly woman, someone who isn't afraid to get out there, someone who isn't afraid to take risks for herself and for those whom she loves, someone who, who makes an impact in her family and in people around her in her community, and someone who is, who is trustworthy and is cherished. Now, there's some, there's some parts. I've been skipping around. Y'all probably figured it out, okay? So I've been skipping around within Proverbs 31. There's some other verses in here that were kind of left out. And it talks about, like, making clothes and, like, bed sheets and blankets and stuff like that. And, and how her husband is, is respected in the community because of, because of how she is. And, and, and some people will take that, that this and talk about that's what it means to be a submissive woman, right? You just make clothes and blankets and cook Right, and do all that kind of stuff. I don't think that's what this passage is talking about at all. It's not talking about a, a, be, a woman being submissive or someone that, who has no voice or just kind of sits in the shadows. You see, in a, in a healthy, God-honoring marriage relationship, the man who is, who is the head is like, is like a coach. So that's, that's the sports metaphor for Mother's Day, okay? Y'all are welcome, okay? So it's, he's, like, he's like a coach, but the, the woman... She's the quarterback, isn't she? You know what I'm saying? She is the quarterback. She's the one who's holding the ball. She is the one who is, who is putting um, the team out there. She's the one who's, who's calling the plays. And sometimes she even has to call an audible that's maybe different than what, what the coach um, thought was going to be um, the best thing. At the end of the day, she's the one who makes things happen, doesn't she? She's the one who makes things happen. And I think that's kind of what this passage is talking about because, you know, honestly, there are things in this passage that are, that are really outdated, like making of the clothes or, and, and those kind of things. But, but here's what I think this is talking about. I think this is an important concept that we all need to kind of understand. When you read Scripture, here's, here's kind of a practice you can do. You can take Scripture, you can, you can bundle up that truth, not your own truth, but that, the actual truth that's found within the text. And you take it and you bundle it up and you take it to today and you put it out in our culture and say, what does this mean in our culture? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you got, you got to t try to understand what that's really talking about. So this is, this is a 3,000-year-old uh, view of what a woman in that culture looks like. Well, what does that look like in our, on our day to, today? Well, I think here's what it means. Here's what these, these verses mean. It means that a good woman is a hard worker. And she's not afraid to get her hands dirty, Right? And it's a difference between someone who, who is only selfish and thinking about themselves 
versus someone who is a provider and someone who's thinking about her family and thinking about her community and people outside, outside of her, her household. And she gets, she gets her hands dirty, like, I mean, metaphorically and realistically. I mean, how many of y'all women have cleaned up, throw up at 2 a.m.? You know what I'm talking about? Dirty diapers, you know, unclogging toilets. I mean, come on. Like, there's, there's a lot of, of literally getting your hands dirty um, for, for, for women in this room. You guys are hard workers, and the reason you do that is because you want to make an influence, and you want to provide. You want to do those things. And now, it doesn't mean in this, this passage that a woman is supposed to, like, work you know, her fingers to the bone. And just never have any time off. I mean, we were supposed to have time off. God created us that way to have, have rest. And so dudes in this room, that's a, a message for you today. Like, let your woman have a day off, okay? Provide for her today. Rub her feet this afternoon. Babe, I'm going to rub your feet this afternoon. It's on, okay? We're doing that today, okay? So you need to go and, and do that for your, the woman in your life, okay? Do that because she deserves it. She needs rest as well. But what this is talking about is a woman who is marked by a consistency where she diligently works hard to take care of other people. But that's how God has made you, right? It's that God-given feeling that you have. If you're a mom in this room, you know what I'm talking about. Having that desire to take care of someone else. And so if God's given you that desire, like run with it, live within it, and do it to the best of your ability. And that's what this woman, this Proverbs 31 woman, is trying to do it. Now, how in the world do you do it? Like this, this is all great. Like, how, okay, making, making up all these, these sayings and talking about women and how they're, how they're supposed to be. But how in the world do you actually live that out in your life? Well, I think in Proverbs chapter 31, towards the very end, it gives us the cheat code, okay? There's a cheat code to be able to actually live this way. So look at verse 30. Verse 30 talks about it. Here's what it says. Charm is deceptive. and Beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Here's what it's saying. Those first two things are things of this world, right? And we can live our lives pursuing those things. But the Bible says... Someone will be praised if they fear the Lord, if they make that their aim. If a woman makes their aim in life to, to serve the Lord, to love the Lord, to put their life in line with the Lord, then she will be greatly praised. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Okay, I mean, the Bible talks a lot about, about fearing the Lord. What does that mean? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things. We think about fear. Um, it might mean the like, like actual terror that you have of something that is you know, bigger than you something that is really powerful. Um, fear could also mean where you respect someone who has higher authority, or fear can also mean where you have like this reverence or awe of greatness. And I think the Bible's saying that fear of God is like all three of those combined. Where when a woman understands who God is and understands how God created her, then things change things begin to change in your life. When instead of pursuing these other things, you pursue the Lord, things in your life change. Ultimately, what this is saying for, for us today is that a woman of God is someone who puts their faith in Jesus, who puts their faith in the Savior. And when you do, here's what happens. Your decisions Instead of your decisions being based on, on these things, your actions being based on these first two things, which is like this, this well that you, you dig down in and you try to draw up uh, life from it, but it ends up being just full of insecurities and uh, full of disappointments. Instead of drawing from that well over and over and over again, here's what the Bible is saying. When you draw from the well of Jesus... Things change in your life. And all of a sudden, ladies in this room find their security in Jesus. They find their hope in Jesus. They find their identity, not in the things of this world, not, not in charm and beauty, but in Jesus. That's what it means 
to be a woman of God. That is, that's the cheat code that allows you to live the way we've been talking about. This is the answer to being a good, godly woman, is to have that kind of relationship with Jesus. Or you can remember it this way. A good woman's purpose and motivation is found in Jesus. Think about it. The purpose for why they exist is Jesus, things change. If their motivation, if your motivation for why you do the things you do, the things you get involved in, the things you say yes to, the things you say no to, when your motivation is found in Jesus, things change. And all of a sudden you begin to move towards being like that woman we've been talking about. Now there are some stories in the New Testament that talk a lot about how Jesus valued women. How he, he would restore women. He would take care of and, and love women in his culture. And I'm telling you what, guys, I think a lot of times we look at the Bible and we're like, man, it's kind of like subjugates women in some ways. But you got to realize that's not God subjugating women. That's that culture, that, in, that evil, sinful culture that the Bible is all found up all in, that these cultures would devalue women. And Jesus changed everything. And he valued women so much so that they hated him for it. They hated the way that he would, he would bring a woman in, into the room and say, you can't bring her in here because our culture says you can't do that. And Jesus says, no, no, no. That's not how we're going to do things. I'm changing things. She's no longer a second-class citizen. Things are different. You look in Luke chapter 8, you read this story about uh, Mary Magdalene. She became one of Jesus' followers, and Jesus saved her. We don't, we don't know everything that hap happened, but she sa God saved her from this evil and dark past. And we don't know her past, but we know something. Everyone has a past, don't they? Every single one of us, every woman in this room has a past. And Jesus took her and valued her. And here's something that's really crazy and really countercultural, and I think it changes everything. Jesus didn't just value her. He gave her a seat at the table as one of the disciples. And the Bible talks about how Jesus had many women who were followers of him, even named them by name, which was crazy in that culture. Here's what I think this is saying. Jesus loves women, values women. Honors women. Gives them a place of prominence in the church. Here's something you need to know. You are loved, ladies. You are so valued. You are honored. And I pray that today in your house, that you are, you are cherished. That you are, you are lifted up today. And that people would applaud you for who you are and all the things that you've done. And I want you to know, as the pastor here at Central, this. Here in our church, you have a seat at the table. You're important, and we need you. God loves you, and we do too. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for all of the women here in this room. And I love how the end of Proverbs says that we should applaud them. And that their good deeds should go before them and people should, should praise them for what they've done. And so God, we just take a moment today and we do that. We thank you, God, for all of the women in our lives. They've changed us. They've made us who we are. And God, we see that you've been working through them in our lives. So God, today I just pray for every woman in this room, for everyone that's listening online, God, that you would just help them to, to know their worth in you. Not in the things of this world, but in you. And as they rest in that, I pray, Lord, that this ideal Proverbs 31 woman would not be, not be a weight upon us, but it would be a coach to encourage us Every woman that they would, they would begin to, if they aren't already, to, to move towards that godly example as they trust in Jesus. 
I pray, God, there's anyone in this room, anyone online who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus, God, that you would convict their heart today to put their faith and trust in you and that you would change their lives for the better. Help women today to be fearless, God, to work hard, to provide, to be that trustworthy partner that is so cherished and loved. I pray, God, they'd be able to do that as they trust in Jesus. We trust you to do that. Thank you for all the women in our lives, God. Bless them today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, they're just finishing up service in there, and I wanted to come out and tell you that we love you guys and we're praying for you. If you made a decision today, we would love to hear about it. So you can email us at prayer at cbcowasso.org, and we'd love to respond to you, pray with you, and just be in that communication because you just made a decision. That's awesome. We want to celebrate that. Um, Remember, as we go out into the world, that we exist to live for Christ, love people, and make disciples. Have a good day.